Hi, or welcome to Paranormal Captivity. Today I want to tell you about the Oak Island Money Pit. It's also called the Oak Island Mystery Pit, and you're about to find out why. In 1795, on the eastern end of Oak Island in the woods, a teenager named Daniel McGinnis found a area in the woods about 13 feet across, all the way around, that was depressed into the ground. Now you wouldn't think anything about this normally because if you go into the woods, you know that the terrain can be kind of unpredictable and, and weird. Above the depression, hanging right above it, off of a branch, was an old tackle block. And so, obviously that caught his attention. He was like, what the heck is this? So Daniel got his other teenage friends, John and Anthony, together. He's like, hey, I found this weird thing in the woods. Them, being teenage boys, they thought, you know, what if it's pirates? What if, what if there's some kind of crazy treasure or something hidden here? So they decided to just start digging and see what happens. Two feet under the ground, right underneath where the tackle block was hanging, they find slate flagstones laid out flat. And so they're obviously curious as to why these are there. Later on they find out that the slate isn't, isn't even from that island. So they're already like, okay, we're onto something. Something's up, something is, is here. Once they move the flagstones, they notice that just in the area where the flagstones were, they were at the top of a shaft. It had to have been man-made. There were wood columns in it, and there were pickaxe marks against like the really hard soil along the sides of it. So they knew that people had been here before. So they just keep digging. They hit the 10 foot down mark, and they find wooden logs laid all the way across the entire width and length of the shaft. So they dig those out. Underneath the logs, the soil had kind of settled. So there was about a two foot depression where it kind of just dropped off and then there was more soil. They continued to dig and dig and they hit about 25 feet down and they realized they're just three kids. They should probably reevaluate their plan and see if there's a better way to go about doing this. So they covered up the depression, they covered up their pit, everything about it was covered and completely camouflaged. And then in 1803, the three kids are now adults and decide they're going to look for backers to try and support them as they go into this endeavor of finding what's in this pit. A man named Simeon Linz was contacted and he loved the story of them finding it and the things that they've found in the pit so far. So he's like, I will back you. So he formed a company just to do this excavation. So they start excavating this area of land again. They get about 30 feet into the pit and they hit another oak platform. So they're like, okay, there is more in this pit. Awesome. Past the oak platform, every 10 feet, they start getting a different material. It could be charcoal, putty, stones, more logs. They actually found a stone that was three foot wide with weird strange writings and carvings written on it. So they keep digging and they keep digging. They get to 93 feet down and they hit mud. They probed it with whatever they had at the time that could reach and they hit something solid deep within the pit. So they kind of wrap up for the night, they're like, we hit the mother load, there's something down there, and we are just a few mere feet away. Let's wrap up for the night, and in the morning, we're going to excavate this soft mud and be able to see what's in this pit. So they wrap up for the night, they come back in the morning to 60 feet of water in this pit. Now, no matter what they did, it just kept filling with water. So they ended up having to bail on the project because they couldn't figure out a way to get the water out of the pit. It just kept coming back. In 1849, there's a new company that discovers the mystery pit and they decide they want to back the excavation. This new group gets a drill. So they drill and they pull it back up. There's samples of all kinds of stuff attached to the drill. They find more levels of oak, spruce, clay, and then they, they see in the drill that there are a few specks of gold chain attached to it. They discover that the reason that this pit is filled with so much water is because the way it was built and engineered, it was basically booby-trapped to be able to trap tide water. So every night the tide came back in and it would not let it dissipate. They kind of start investigating the rest of the island to see what else is around because if it's able to retain this much water, it has to have some kind of offshoot to it that connects to the ocean. About 500 feet away, they discover a flood trap that was dug at the same time, all of the, the materials and everything in it were of the same time period. 
and it had like a natural filtration system that would let water in but not let it back out. Many attempts were made to try and something to make this tunnel not operate anymore and they weren't able to do it. The company actually ran out of money in the process of trying to make this happen. So in 1851 they just gave up. They stopped the excavation because they couldn't figure out how to make the tide stop coming in. In 1861 they brought out some steam-powered pumps and they're like we're just gonna pump all of this water out of this tunnel. Well when they decided to do that the pump had a boiler in it, and the boiler ended up overheating and exploding and scalding a person to death. This company decided to try and do more damage to that offshoot that was allowing it to keep retaining water, so they kept drilling upwards in it, trying to connect it in different ways, and it ended up just causing collapse. And so the areas that collapsed killed people and it still somehow functioned and kept retaining the water. Now they were able to do some additional drilling and in their drilling they discovered there was some kind of cement vault at 150 feet below. In 1959 a father and son decided that they were going to buy this area and, and excavate it and figure out what was going on. The thing that they decided to do first was build a shaft the same width and dimensions as the shaft that was in the ground and lower it into this shaft to block all of the sides to eventually be able to, once they removed the water, the water couldn't come back in. They're lowering this shaft in incremental amounts. The dad ended up falling in, and as he's in there, the son sees him. The son tries to go in after the dad, and he ends up stuck in there. Three other people go in trying to save them who were along with them for this excavation and only one of them ended up getting rescued because somebody had tied a rope around them. The rest of them drowned. In 1970, there was a group called the Triton Alliance formed just to work on this excavation. So they dug many, many holes leading to this supposed vault down in the ground. And they decided they were going to, going to just take different routes, lower cameras, see what they could see and see if there's a better way to access what was buried there besides the main two points of access, they're pretty sure they saw a human chest and hand buried in the earth. But with it being the technology of the day, the quality wasn't great, so it was never confirmed because they never actually dug up the earth there to find out, but it is presumed that there were bodies nearby. In all of their attempts, they never reached the vault. In 1995, they brought the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute to survey the island and see what they could get with their technology and see what was underground. Now their findings themselves are confidential. No one actually knows what their findings were except for the people who hired them. But it is said that their findings were not discouraging. Now there's a lot of speculation as to who made this, why they made it. There's actually stones that are like really large boulders placed in specific arrangements on the island in the form of a giant cross. So some people think it might be the Holy Grail or that it has some type of religious significance. There are theories of Vikings and pirates could be native people of the time. No one really knows who created this or why it's created or what is down there or if we will ever even get to it. I would vote pirates, but it kind of sucks that you would bury your treasure so well that no one could ever get it. So that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Or it might be some kind of like crazy relic that no one's supposed to have. Like maybe it's a cursed item or something that has too much power. You know what I mean? So I just, I'm fascinated by this story, have been for years, and I thought I'd share with you guys in case any of you didn't know about it. Or maybe I had some additional information that you hadn't heard before. So hope you enjoyed hearing about the Oak Island Mystery Pit or Money Pit since now that it's had so much money spent on it. It's the money pit. And I will talk to you guys very soon. I love you all. Have a wonderful night. Bye!